Is the eye that sees everything a symbol of divine omniscience or the sinister influence? Today it symbolizes control and domination by a shadowy elite, but its original use was quite different. This video traces its use and meaning from ancient times, when it was a symbol of divine providence, powerfully representing spiritual truth and awakening. The Eye of Providence is a symbol, having its origin in Christian iconography, showing an eye often surrounded by rays of light or a glory and usually enclosed by a triangle. It represents the eye of God watching over humanity. Humanity is losing its precious symbolism. There are many cultural, religious, philosophical, and cultic uses of the symbol of the all-seeing eye, which is also called the Eye of Providence. Some suggest that the all-seeing eye is based on the Eye of Horus from ancient Egypt, although similarity in symbolism does not necessarily connote similar meaning. The basic representation is that of a lidded eye with glory, or beams, emanating from it in all directions. The European Christian version also includes a triangular frame around the eye. Generally speaking, the all-seeing eye is a symbol of an omniscient entity usually a deity that can see all. The all-seeing eye is a powerful esoteric symbol that is widely misunderstood and misused today, few know what it originally represented. Originally it was a symbol of greater spiritual power or God, an attentive watchman of humanity or a spiritual part awakened within. But these days he has many different associations. Today the eye that sees everything is more likely to be seen as a symbol, Illuminati, control and surveillance by the elites that largely direct the show on this planet at this time, this is because, over time, dark sinister forces have seized the esoteric symbols that for thousands of years they were used to convey positive messages of help, spiritual elevation and principles, the eye that sees everything is an excellent example of how spiritual symbols have been sequestered and changed, in reality there has not been much effort to understand the original meaning of the symbol or claim for the spiritual meaning that was transmitted first. The symbolism has long been used by humanity to communicate ideas that crystallized in a compact form. As the well-known saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. The esoteric symbols are alive today as they were in the ancient past, but there is much confusion around their use, history, intention and meaning. In ordinary life we use symbols to show important information, such as road and road signs, among many other symbols that are very widespread and common today. Some other examples are corporate logos and state certification. Symbolism is also used especially in the communication of non-physical, spiritual ideas, phenomena, and processes. The eye that sees everything is one of the most powerful and widely used symbols, and abused. Then its use will be traced from the beginning of time until the 18th century before masonry from the 18th century onwards abducted and abused it, and it will show what the symbol originally represented. The use of the all-seeing eye in ancient cultures. India. Perhaps we find the forerunner of what eventually became known as the eye that sees everything in the Rig Veda, a Sanskrit text that is believed to have been written more than 3,000 years ago and one of the oldest known texts. In it there are many references to the sun and other deities as being an eye in the sky, as an eye that reveals creation, or an eye that never closes. One can compare this as a symbol of a high level of awakening awareness that advanced spiritual beings have and that an ordinary person can potentially reach. The Hindu god Shiva has three eyes. The third eye or forehead chakra is known as the eye of Shiva, possessor of all knowledge, which when opened destroys everything it sees. Therefore, it is a symbol of knowledge that destroys evil and ignorance. Representation of Shiva with his third eye. Again, this can be compared to an awakening of the most spiritual part of a person who sees the truth of things and can then eliminate within the psyche of a person that which is opposite and blocks the divine consciousness to be manifested more. In this way it is a creative destruction of evil to transform it into a higher consciousness. Even in modern times, the eye of Shiva is used in jewelry to give protection against evil to its wearer and to gain wisdom and understanding from the world, from life's events and from itself, for positive transformation. The all-seeing eye of Buddha. In Buddhism, the Buddha is known as the eye of the world. It is typical for temples in Nepal to display a Buddha eye graphic as shown above, note that includes a mark for the third eye as well. The eyes are also known as the eyes of wisdom and compassion. Buddha statues usually show a point in the middle of the forehead to represent the third eye. Ancient Egypt. The Eye of Osiris. The hieroglyph for Osiris contains an eye. It is interesting to know that the Egyptian hieroglyph for his god Osiris contains an eye as shown above. 
As with Hinduism and Buddhism we find a spiritual deity that is represented in ancient times as an eye. Eye of Horus. In ancient Egypt, the eye that sees everything is known as the Eye of Horus or the Eye of Ra and was also part of the symbolism of Wad Jet. In various myths they were symbols of protection, healing and restoration. The left eye of Horus was said to be the moon and his right eye the sun. Horus was a sun god with a hawk's head and it could be said that the eye of Horus was designed as an eye of a lanner hawk with its mark under the eye. Could the eye of Horus represent parts of the brain used to manifest consciousness? It is also very interesting to note that the drawing of the eye of Horus very much matches the cross section of the midbrain, where the thalamus, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland are located. The pineal gland is often said to be the third eye and a center of spirituality and spiritual discernment, which can be developed in a person. It is as if the eye of Horus was a representation of the thalamus as the eyeball with the corpus chiosum of the eyebrows above and the medulla oblongata brainstem and the hypothalamus being the two marks below. If this is what you were drawing, even calling it the Eye of Horus, does this suggest that you considered the middle brain as the focus of consciousness or even of divine consciousness or the consciousness of Horus? Horus is a sun and symbolic god of the universal Christ and a spiritual force that a properly prepared person can join. In the Middle East the eye that sees everything has been known in the form of a symbol of a hand with an eye called Hamsa, Kamsa or Hamesh. A Jewish Hamsa. It is the symbol of an eye in the palm of a hand, usually the right hand. Again, it is a symbol of protection against the evil eye bad luck caused by the jealousy of others and danger in general and can be seen as an amulet of good luck in that regard. It is also known as the hand of Fatima in Islam and the hand of Miriam in Judaism. In India it is known as the Hamsa hand. The Jains also have a form of the Hamsa in its symbolism with the word Ahimsa meaning non-violence inside a wheel instead of where the eye would be. The Hamsa has been used for thousands of years and is still in use today as amulets, talismans or wall ornaments. It seems to have its origins in ancient Mesopotamia with the hand of Ishtar being a symbol of divine protection even though it did not contain the eye and the palm. A more Christian representation with themes of the Hamsa is a work of art called The Divine World by Khalil Gibran, a prominent Lebanese Catholic Maronite of the 20th century who was a poet, painter, writer, philosopher, theologian. Detail of The Divine World by Cahil Gibran. In Greece and Turkey they have something similar to the Hamsa that they call Nazar. It is only an eye without the hand but it is used in the same way and has the same meaning as the Hamsa, that is, to ward off the evil eye, in the form of amulets or hanging ornaments usually made of blue glass. Similarly, in Buddhism there is the amulet Buddha's eye to ward off evil eye. The symbol of an eye in a hand also appears in Aztec and Mayan cultures, and in works of Native American art, although archaeologists are not sure what meaning they had for these cultures. Below is an example of Native Americans referred to as the Rattle Disc, which was discovered by a farmer in Moundville, Alabama, USA in 1800. Some archaeologists believe that its symbolism may have represented a portal to spiritual dimensions. It is the most elaborate decorated artwork found in Moundville giving rise to the belief that it was of great importance to its creators. Other works found there also contain the symbol of the hand and eye. In ancient Ecuador, there is also the surprising discovery of 1984 in La Mana, in the center of Ecuador, of an ancient artifact known as the Black Pyramid that was among 300 artifacts of unknown origin. It is not known what culture came from and the numerous objects found are disconcerting and seemingly out of place in this part of the world, such as an object designed as a royal cobra of Southeast Asia. Cobras do not exist in South America. The so-called Black Pyramid is made of black stone with an eye at the apex. The stone that is encrusted with gold forms 13 levels of bricks and an eye on the top. These inlays shine when they are under black light. In general it is seen as a representation of the Great Pyramid of Giza 12,022 km away and also incredibly similar to the pyramid symbol with the eye used on the Great Seal and on the $1 bill of the USA. Is also interesting to note the artifact cobra has another similarity to ancient Egypt, where the high charges associated with the eye of Horus, Ra and Wad jetten its protection aspects with that being carried on the forehead of the pharaohs in the eyebrow just where the third eye is located. This symbolizes the elevation of a person's energies to a higher vibration that leads internally to the awakening of the psychic faculties such as these latent in the third eye. Illuminati Black Pyramid with the Royal Cobra. 
It is not known how old these objects are since dating them has not been possible but it is thought that they are older than the known ancient cultures of the region. There is also a language of pre-Sanskrit type which is very old engraved on some of the objects, including the lower part of the Black Pyramid, where there are also marks that appear to trace the stars of the Orion constellation, which pyramids of Giza also trace. The four marks in pre-Sanskrit are believed that when translated they say, the creator's son comes. Given the care taken to create this object, it seems to have been an important symbol for its creators, although it is not clear how they interpreted it. Ancient Greece Hymns Orfeo in the Song to the Sun describes interchangeably well. As an eternal eye with broad inspection. And he compares her to being the father of the ages. And as immortal Jove, all search, producing light. Then later as the great eye of nature and the starry sky. Followed by the faithful defender and the eye of good. Here we see in an ancient text of the Western world a similar representation of the sun, as presented in the ancient text of the East, the Rig Veda, as an eye of the Creator and an eye that he sees everything that never closes, always watching and protecting good. The Christianity. The lamp of the body is the eye, so if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Jesus in Matthew chapter 622, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and their ears are attentive to their cry. Psalm chapter 3415, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, watching the bad and the good. Proverbs chapter 15:3. Does Talpiot's tomb show an eye that sees everything? A possible first known use of the eye symbol that sees everything in Judeo-Christianity is the so-called Tomb of Jesus of the 1st century AD discovered in 1980, which uses a similar symbol at the entrance to the tomb. Regardless of who the grave is, could it be a first known use or the beginnings of the eye symbol in the pyramid in the Judeo-Christian tradition? In Christianity, the all-seeing eye or the eye of providence or the eye of God has been used as a symbol since at least the 16th century, as seen in the following table below that represents a scene from Luke chapter 24 13 to 32 where after his resurrection Jesus has dinner with two disciples. Christian painting of the 6th century, dated 1525, by the Italian artist Pontormo student of Da Vinci, called the Supper in Emmaus, represents Luke chapter 24 13 to 32. The eye is inside a triangle, and surrounded by rays of light, with the triangle representing the Holy Trinity and the entire symbol signifying the omnipresence of God and the eye that sees everything observing creation. Some claim that the eye on the triangle symbol was added to the painting shortly after the Council of Trent 1545-1563, to comply with its canons and decrees, but even if that is so it would still place its use in the 16th century. In Alsace, France, the fresco painted on the altar of the Church of the Abbey of St. Jean-Baptiste 1763 shows a great example of the symbol of the eye in the pyramid, with the rays of the glory crossing the clouds. Another example is found in the Cathedral of Aachen in Germany. The building was built at the end of the 8th century under the Emperor Charlemagne and then expanded in the Middle Ages, with various other changes and updates on the way. Apparently, the symbol of the eye that sees everything was placed in the cathedral in 1766 to mark the renovations carried out that year. Keep in mind that these first two examples predate the founding of the Bavarian Illuminati 1776, although Freemasonry already existed in England and Europe at that time. Perhaps it was a Masonic influence that saw these symbols used in these cathedrals, however, it was not until 1797 that it is considered that the Masons began to use the symbol of the eye in the pyramid. The symbol of the eye in the pyramid also occupies a prominent place on the front façade of the Hartegbrucker Church in Leiden, the Netherlands, built in 1835-1836. The Latin words hic domus dei est et porta celli translates as this is the house of God and the door to heaven. These are just some Christian examples of many that appear in Europe. As we have seen, throughout history there has been a strong tradition over time, continents and cultures in the use of eye symbolism to generally represent a vigilant creative benevolent force, which helps and protects humanity and represents a spiritual part that is within one.